Also, uh, let's welcome back our co-host. That's Johnny the Bod, John Bodwell. Yes, sir. Matt Miller of the Hall of Famer. Good day. And if your day has made, been made to be an adventure by these, I call them aggressive spotted lantern flies because they'll fly right under your neck, under your head, under your clothing. And uh, they don't seem to care, but they do have good vision and some quicks because if you go to step on them, they'll hop out of the way. <laughs> like stink bugs were dumb. You could, you could kill those things. They, they never flew away from you. They would just embrace death. But the spotted lantern fly, it wants to live. It would not vote for the medically assisted suicide uh, no. amendments. You <laughs> have to stun it. them first. If any, if anyone in our audience has any good spotted lantern fly recipes that they want to put in the chat, <laughs> mm, I was hungry until that. Let's welcome in uh, our favorite bug person, Dr. Tracy Lesky. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Welcome back. Thank you. It's always great to see you. Although when I see you, it's because of some pesty insect invasion. I feel so loved. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be known for something. Yeah, I know. Exactly. So I'm going to have to disagree with you this morning. I yeah. think spotted lanternflies are far more stupid than brown marmorated stink bugs. You would know because you deal with these things all day. I, brown yeah. brown marmor, marmor, marmalade? Are we talking about orange marmalade or marminated? I mean, what it, are the? if it makes it feel more... I I've, I just never heard anybody refer to them as anything but stink bugs. Can you repeat what they actually are again? That's great. She's a scientist. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are the their uh, their common name is brown marmorated stink bug. So the marmorated means the marbled appearance on their sides, mm -hmm. and their scientific name is Haliomorpha halis. Haliomorpha halis. That sounds like some kind of a Harry Potter spell. <laughs> Haliomorpha mortis. Don't overmodulate the microphone too much, John. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob. I'm pumped up this morning. It, it, uh, it fries our sound system. Uh, let's talk about this uh, spotted lanternfly problem that we're having because sure. in some places they're overwhelming. They are overwhelming. Um, so this invasive showed up in the eastern panhandle a couple of years ago, but it actually first appeared in eastern PA back in 2014. It's spread now to about 17 states across the eastern U.S. Uh, they're spread both by their own capacity for dispersal, meaning they can fly somewhat. This is why I say they're stupid. Mm -hmm. um, they're not that great of flyers. Um, but the other thing is they're great at hitching rides. So we see them um, getting on vehicles and hitching rides down I-81, and we're seeing a spread right down I-81 or along railways and things like that. So right now we're dealing with lots and lots of adults. I understand because they've been in Pennsylvania longer than other places, they've started to develop some natural predators in Pennsylvania. So yes, to some degree. So with invasives, um, they undergo what is called the natural enemy release, which means when they are when they invade a new region, the natural enemies, the predators, parasites that they co-evolved with are not present. So that allows them to flourish. So yes, there are some things that are attacking um, lanternfly, but not enough to where it's no longer a problem. How, yeah. how fast do they multiply? Uh, females are fattening up right now. You'll see them, they keep getting fatter and fatter and they slowly walk up um, sort of the trunks of trees and they start laying eggs. We're just starting to see egg laying now. That'll peak about the middle of October. Each female can lay mm, two to four egg masses and in each egg mass there could be like 25 to 40 eggs. So, you know, anywhere from 50 to 150 little nymphs waiting to hatch the oh following my. spring. So, yeah. And they overwinter as eggs. They're just sitting there. Is there anything weather-wise that kills them? Very cold weather, which we haven't been having. So that's not really on our side. And that's also, you know, what benefited the stink bugs this year, too. Not a cold winter. Not a cold. We need more winter. We need more winter. Yeah. We need more winter. We do. When you say cold, how cold? So, um below 10 degrees fahrenheit hmm. yeah where you start to see some decent mortality so pretty cold like but does that kill the eggs too apparently apparently not all of them um it depends on where they lay so that's the thing about lanternflies and you'll start to see them now 
that one picture that I gave you, it, it's it's sort of like a Where's Waldo, find the egg mass. Um, on the on, tree? On the grapevine, yeah. Okay, Dylan, if you can bring that one up, that would be great. So they're really indescript. They look like little um, sort of patches of gray mud. The eggs are under there, and then the female puts this waxy coating. And so you might see something on that. I, I don't know. Can you guys see it? Can you pick it out? So if we just cut down all the trees in the county and put up <laughs> and put up townhouses, we'll be fine. Don't, don't yell. Don't and yell. put up townhouses, He's we'll be very fine. very emotional just talk about normal. this just talk subject. Normal. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but then you're going to block the 17-year cicadas from coming up, and that would be very sad. That would be, because they are a lot of fun. They're super fun. They are fun. Yeah. So I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, it would be 17 years <laughs> till you'd be sad and notice, so. But I would know. I would know. So I would be. In 17 years, you would have moved on. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. So um, you say that these things winter. Like the stink bug always tries to get in your house in the winter. Yes. Does the spotted lanternfly try to do that? They, they're not trying to get into your house, but they orient to dark, upright objects. That's why you were talking about them at the goalpost on the, was it the soccer field? The light standards. They're oh, always the at the base. Dale, yeah. you have a picture of that too, I think, the ba base of the light standards? Yeah, so that is a place where, this is our water tower, that, that picture. So that's like a big green dark beacon for them, and they orient to and hang out there. There's hundreds of them there. Thousands and thousands. It's disgusting. Yeah. Can they be sprayed? Does any insects Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them? Yeah, oh yeah, they're easy to kill. That's the nice thing. They're not like stink bugs who, you know, resurrect themselves. These guys, you know, you can when, really use anything and it kills them. When the apocalypse comes, what will we have? We'll have stink bugs, uh bed bugs and cockroaches. <laughs> That'll be it. And lantern flies possibly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 So, are you looking forward to that? No, no, not really. <laughs> Okay. It's not in his top 10 list. If you're asking yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. you said about anything kills them. So if I have uh, a tree that I, looks like what I'm looking at on the screen right now at the base of that mm -hmm. water tower, and I've got hundreds of mm -hmm. them, if not more, mm -hmm. what's my best remedy? Well, I mean, I, you can look at really any ready-to-use product that you could find in, you know, a hardware store, that kind of thing, um, home and garden. It will, it will kill them, but... The piece that's important about this, yes, you'll kill those that are there, but there are plenty out in sort of un unmanaged habitat and woodlands that are still there. And so it may make you feel good, but it probably isn't going to, unfortunately, put a big dent in the population. So, yeah. So that's why we need the natural enemies um, mm -hmm. that Rob was asking about to well, really work across the landscape. What, what are their natural enemies? So um, there's a... We do, we need, do we need like king cobras or something? I mean, what, what are we, what are we <laughs> going to bring smaller, in? Much smaller, much smaller. There are um, some parasitoids, which are tiny little wasps. They don't sting. They're not going to sting you, but they lay their eggs. One lays its eggs in the nymphs, and so it sort of develops inside and pops out. It's kind of gruesome, but cool. And then another <laughs> um, will lay eggs in the adults as well, like under their wing pads and things. So... We're looking at those. They're still um, being screened for host specificity, meaning that they're not going to attack our native species. And if they they do, they probably wouldn't be permitted for release. But the other thing that we're looking at are um, species of fungi, um, like Bulvaria bassiana, which is a fungus that attacks them and turns them into goo, which I, is satisfying. I think I had that goo? at the Schmeckle. At the, I think I had that at the Schmeckle stube up in <laughs> the Bavarian something. Yes. Yes. The Good Bavarian. German fare. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, also entomopathogenic nematodes, which are tiny little round worms that get in, and uh, they release a bacterium inside the lanternfly, and that turns it into goo. We like it when we turn them into yeah. goo. Didn't they make a movie like that, Finding <laughs> Nematodes or Finding <laughs> Something? Big hit. Big hit. Kids loved it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So how do you get the, the fungi or the other things into a lanternfly? Is... Yeah, so what we are looking at is exactly that question. Where do we treat? And so with lanternflies, when they're young nymphs, they'll feed on everything, like literally everything from pokeweed to poison ivy to lots of um, young trees it doesn't matter but as they um, mature their host range becomes much more narrow so they're feeding on tree of heaven they're feeding on black walnut they're feeding on grape 
and pop and maple that's where we see them late season mm -hmm. so depending on the time of the year you hit those places where they're going to be so they pick it up mm -hmm. and this is kind of right now is perfect weather for it it's better when it's damp and wet outside because the fungal spores live longer and they have more chance to attack the lanternfly fungal spores would be a good name for a band it would be by the way <laughs> next up the fungal spores <laughs> yes. all these guys are traveling all over the country watching them. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Tracy, we have a question in our comment section. What is the lifespan of a spotted lanternfly? So a lifespan of a spotted lanternfly, they actually spend the most time in the egg stage, which begins, let's say, mid-October. They hatch in late April, early May, and then they uh, develop through four nymphal instars. And they start. we start seeing adults in July, and that peaks in early September. And then they'll continue to live as adults until we have a hard frost. And so you'll actually see them feeding in a tree in place, dead. So hopefully by mid-November, everybody has perished. They'll feed in place, dead? Like they're, well, I guess they're not feeding. That would not make any sense. But they're, they will be feeding, a frost hits, and they're dead on the tree. Just hanging out there. Dead. They really do hate cold weather, huh? So. They really do. They really do. And in fact, the further south they go, the bigger they get and the fatter they get. It's really, really interesting. How big can a southern lanternfly get? Well, like, what was it? Like 30% bigger. Some of the ones that have invaded in places like Tennessee are much bigger than ours. So it's kind of interesting. We think it's related to, you know, they got going earlier, the favorable conditions. So... We'll see as they move further south. They're pretty had, decent size around here. They are to big. Be honest. Oh yeah, yeah, no, they're big insects. Yeah, I had you heard, can't miss them. <laughs> yeah, I had heard there's some down in the Carolinas that are are bigger, mm -hmm. bigger than a squirrel. So you got to really <laughs> watch out. <laughs> That's a big lanternfly. <laughs> Imagine a flying squirrel like a spotted. So, uh, what in regards to uh, the spotted lanternfly? Do they bite if they are they are they a bother to Americans other than whatever? Well, it kind of goes back to the stupid comment. Mm -hmm. um, I've had them probe on me when they land on me. They're not biting you. They're just tasting you. It's different. That's kind of zombie-esque. <laughs> <Sounds, laughs> uh, it doesn't sound any more appetizing. No. But they also, uh, they're tarsi. Their feet have little claws that help them claw claw their way up trees. So you sometimes feel that, That's too. That's what I, I thought one was on biting you. me and landed on my leg. Now, yeah. I've got yeah. a couple other questions for you, too, about some really disturbing-looking insects. What is the Death Watch beetle? I think uh, Dylan has a picture of this, too. Yes. So Th this I, sounds serious. we got a real theme going today. We What's do. the Death Watch beetle? Well, I thought... It's October. We're in spooky season. Yeah. We should talk about the Death Watch beetle because yeah, that's yeah. a really cool wood boring beetle that we do have here in the eastern U.S. Is that McCartney? McCartney? The Death Watch beetle? I don't know what you mean. Paul McCartney, one of the beetles. Oh. One, of the beetles. <laughs> one of the remaining I'm beetles. I'm in a science mode. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> She's not in entertainment mode I'm yet. not in entertainment. Well, I am, yeah. but not that. Wow. Not that is an ugly oh. beetle. It is. So what's interesting about these guys, so... Um, Don't look shame that beetle, John. Yeah. So the males, <laughs> they knock, so they hit their head on, like, the ceiling of the little cavern that they make in, in timbers and things like that in old wood to attract females for mating. And so that beetle has this entire repertoire of folklore because it's sort of like you hear the death watch beetle before you die and, Ed, and edgar Allan poe wrote about it as well so oh, i always yeah. loved this beetle and i was thinking about it this morning. never more exactly never, never more so you hear that mm -hmm. so if you hear the death watch beetle i don't know it may be the end i it could be it could be death's head hawk moth anybody know the movie that that showed up in the death's head hawk moth no yeah uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High for, <laughs> yes. for 100, Alex. I love that movie. Great movie. Watch it every time it's on. A really spooky movie. Spooky movie. It? Well, that's spooky, but yeah. They live the Rowdy Rowdy Piper uh, <laughs> oh, films. Definitely scary. Okay, yeah. I'll give it to you. Silence of the Lambs. Do you remember oh. the guy? And he was rearing the moths in the movie? Oh, yeah. No, I don't. The Oh, my God. I yeah. saw the movie, but I don't remember the moth. So, I just remember Clarice could not lose the West Virginia accent no matter how hard she tried. <laughs> and, and her shoes. They made so a point if, of her you, shoes. if you watch the movie um, and the, the serial killer guy, he and his, that whole theme of, of transformation, pupation, he was rearing death's head moths in 
the in his house. So that's a cool. I mean, that's a cool looking bug. Yeah, we don't have those here, unfortunately. No, un- those uh, are unfortunately, unfortunately. Where I, I, where does the name come from? Death's head moth. Well, what? if you look at look at the skull on its head. Okay, this, that's it. Yeah, oh, there's wow. like a little that's skull. skull of, yeah, all right. Yeah, that's a very that's a skull of death. Intricate design. It is. It is. Could Halloween insects. Like <laughs> those are those about. are two pretty good ones there. I thought so too. Yeah. I thought I'd talk about that. With you you warned us about the spotted lantern fly a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and now it's a problem. Are you here to warn us about anything else a couple of years from now? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Um, nothing on the horizon but we i do have colleagues that do kind of these preemptive studies looking for possibilities of things that could be high risk targets so there's one called the cap uh, i'm going to mispronounce it it's the capra beetle but basically that's a stored products pest so that means like it gets in your flour and you know nuts and dog food and all that kind of thing so that's one we keep trying to keep out um but so far I'm going to knock on my head. <laughs> uh, Don't no, do that. No capra beetles, so that's good. Yeah. When you talked about the spotted lanternfly, you said they've been around since about 2014 mm-hmm. into Pennsylvania, now into 17 states. Is that a slow migration? Is that mm-hmm. normal? It, every insect's different um, because of the way they disperse. So it's it's gotten around pretty well, I think, for the time it, you know that it's been here. Um you know, things like brown marmorated stink bug took a little bit longer to spread. Um, it was first detected in Allentown in, not, in the late 90s, then officially identified in 2001. We found it here in 2004, but it wasn't until six years later that we had a major explosion. So um, lanternfly was pretty quick, really, honestly, mm-hmm. from the time we found a dead dead one in our parking lot which was 2019 and here we are five years later and we're like wow and even last year it was pretty spectacular Mm -hmm. locally they're everywhere yeah how long then does it tend to take for some natural predator to develop it it again it really it there's some a period a lag where birds and and generalist predators like wheel bugs and praying mantids and spiders recognize them as a good dinner but they do recognize them um, and so they are consuming them, but it's just that there's so many because they're on so many different host plants, uh, you know, reproducing and, and increasing the size of the population. So it takes a little while, but the other thing we have going on is we would like to kill Tree of Heaven um, because that is one of their favorite hosts. Right. And so we have a verticillium wilt that we're going to be experimenting with that kills Tree of Heaven. And if you kill Tree of Heaven, not only do you take out probably a good chunk of the lanternflies, but also brown marmorated stink bugs. So two for one. That's a two for, for one. Vertil- verticillium wilt. Verticillium wilt. Verticillium non alfalfa. That sounds like a, like an ingredient in some sort of really gourmet. <laughs> and, I, and I put just a light braising of verticillium wilt on mm. it. <laughs> I can smell it from here. Yeah, it causes it to, like, just like you would see with something like late blight in your garden on your tomatoes, it just makes them droop and die. And oh, yeah. so, and we say goodbye to hopefully some tree of heaven, yeah. which Do, is a good thing. Does the uh, spotted lantern fly affect farmers? Yes. Um, unfortunately, wine grapes are one of the biggest crops that are at risk mm-hmm. and the problem with lanternflies and wine grapes is they keep coming back so some, a, a farmer a grower a vineyard operator could treat with an insecticide but because they're invasive they keep coming in and so um, you, you see this repeated invasion into the crops so that's the that's the um, crop we're most concerned about so here's my question to you I think Nixon went to China in 72 and began opening up trade relationships there and now it's 2024. Why didn't this? Why didn't these invasions happen earlier with these kind of insects? Why does it seem that just in the last 20 years we're getting everything? China, it's like the Mario boat lift. You know, we're getting everything they don't want in China over here. Well, it goes both ways. Um, it's global trade. Things can hitch rides, you know, and it's very difficult to detect every single critter that possibly could um, come along for the ride. So, for example. Um, Fall armyworm, which is a pest of um, 
corn and other cereal crops has spread around the globe. They have it in China. It's native here, but it's oh, in China. But good. it's also congratulations <laughs> us. We gave them something. Yes. And it's also unfortunately in the continental Africa, and for small farmers, it's hugely devastating. So, oh, that's not so good. it you know it's just the nature of how we live. Are really. there European or Australian invasive insects in oh, America yeah. that are doing damage? Yeah, so European cherry fruit fly is one that um, has invaded, and it's mostly contained right now to kind of the upper tip of New York and lower part of Ontario. But, yeah, unfortunately, we trade things around. So in 100 years, will all these bugs have effectively gone all around, around the world and this won't be an issue anymore? That's a hypothesis. I don't know. I don't right. know. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, eventually you'd think that the ecosystem would balance itself. Yeah, hmm. maybe. It's I don't a know. thought. It's a thought. It's a hypothesis. Is the stink bug going to have a revival, or have we figured out naturally <laughs> how to eat the thing and kill it and whatever? Eat the thing. <laughs> there don't seem to be as many this year as there have Wait, been. wait, wait. <laughs> You're not done yet. Well, their time is coming. Thank you, fall. Tracy. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> no, uh, we actually saw bigger populations in the field this year than we've probably seen for the past six or seven years and it, it really has to do with the fact that um, we've had two hot dry summers up until now and mild winters and so we were seeing bigger populations in the field we saw some crop injury in some of our fruit orchards that we work in with growers mm -hmm. and um, I made the stupid mistake of paint of baiting my garden shed to collect them for an experiment and I had to take it down because it kind of got out of control this year. yeah yeah. The whole shed? Or just oh, yeah, the yeah. Bait? I think I gave a picture to you guys if you if you pull it up, but it just, on the Green Garden Shed, it was pretty well, nasty. If you're saying there are more of them this year. It's not I as mean, much as 2010. But what I'm saying, but that means that these spotted lanternflies, there are just so many of them that we're not even noticing the stink bugs. That's a good point, actually. I agree with you. I agree with you. It becomes far less noticeable when you're dealing with another invasive. Yeah, yeah. They have to push each other out of the way at least we're not in texas for the invasions you know i'd, I'd rather have the spotted lantern don't flies. get political with tracy here <laughs> you get her in trouble she's a federal employee yeah i know <laughs> i'm looking out for you thank you yeah. where, now okay you have a minute left by research the way, minute where left. where do you work out of where uh, i work at the appalachian fruit research station in kernysville very um, cool yeah yeah. I just, I just love when you come in. I, this is the most fun. I mean, we have tons of guests, but I never have more fun than I have when you're here. Ah, and learning thanks. all these new names, it's just cool stuff. Verticillium non alfalfa. Verticillium non alfalfa. Good job. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's not alfalfa. It's no. not buckwheat. It's not any of the characters mm -mm. from from our gang. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I used so. to watch that show every morning before I caught the school bus. I did, when, too. When I was a wee pup, because they used to run it on the Superstation out of Cleveland, WUAB. Ted nice. Stepien Superstation out of Cleveland, <laughs> when they first started having those cable stations that went into other, other markets. Like Ted Stepien, before he traded TV. away all his first-round draft picks, and they had to make all sorts of changes to the NBA. But that's just another story. Fact. Uh, hey, uh, good to see you, Tracy. Thank you for Likewise. the scary beetle and uh, moth thing. Happy Halloween and spooky season. <laughs>